arc length and sector area. These are going to be things that are going to work for angles in radians. We've got some really nice little tricks for us, so long as we think in radians. So first thing is called an arc length. So if you have a circle, you might think, what do circles have to do with trigonometry? Well, lots, it turns out. If you take a little piece of a circle, so we have a radius r of this circle, and we're going to consider what happens then when we go all the way around or pieces of going all the way around. So the idea will be, all right, well, what happens if we have r as the radius and theta as the angle, but it's measured in radians? Well, then what's the length of the arc? The arc length then is just going to be L equals R theta, where L is this arc length here. It's this actual curved distance that you do. So it's not the straight line between these two. It's the it's the curved distance. That's what we call an arc length. It's the length of a curved arc. That's why I like this one here. Find the arc length. It looks like a, finding that for the cat. <laughs> you see, it looks almost like it's like a piece of a. <laughs> this would be L here. This would be R. So with that, I guess, technically, right? So is this, I guess. So this one here is how we would define it. Now, this is an important equation. Luckily, you don't have to memorize it. This is on your formula booklet, so that's nice. It's a formula booklet. So we use this, like I said, with angles and radians. That's really important. Um, it, it saves us a lot of time in actually calculating this curved piece. So think about this. A long time ago, for example, on Earth, people were trying to find out, like, what is the length of an arc here? Because the Earth is a sphere, right? Or, I mean, it's not quite a sphere. It's got some weird anomalies, but it's mostly a sphere, pretty much a sphere. And this one right here, this arc length, that is the distance from one point to the other on Earth. And that explains all sorts of weird things, like why on maps, um, you know, straight lines on a on or the shortest straight line on a sphere doesn't look like a straight line if you're on a map like if you're on google maps or something like that it looks like it's a curve but it's all because of the projections in any case this is what's really important this is the actual distance between two points on a curve as you walk along it so that should be uh, really important what if your angle is two pi so let's just uh, show what happens here so this is in case you have some angle here what if Let's do this one. What if theta is 2 pi? In other words, what if you go all the way around? Right? So that means you start somewhere and you go all the way around the circle and you come back again. Well, let's look at what this equation says. It says that it'll be L equals R times your angle, which in this case would be 2 pi. Well, guess what? That means your length would be 2 pi R. He doesn't look like the, doesn't, isn't that the circumference? So look. We recover the circumference equation. That circumference of a circle is 2 pi r. Yay! So that's kind of nice, isn't it? Now let's do the other one. The other one's called sector area. So same situation here where we had this little L here was this, you know, arc length. Except this time we're going to try to do like this shaded part right here. This, this is the sector area here. That's what this green part would be. And that sector area, well, I can write it as A equals. And um, it's actually going to be kind of straightforward as well. It's going to be half times um, but r squared times theta. So this again is on your formula booklet. You don't have to memorize this, which is nice. That's why I like this one here with this professor who's like skateboarding down a <laughs> hill here. So you calculate it to rad because we're using radians. So this is our sector area. And again, you don't have to memorize this. This is on your formula booklet. And let's take a look at what happens here. I hope you'll indulge me here. I guess I'm the one making the video, so ha ha, unless you skip it. Let's do this. What if, what if theta equals two pi? In other words, what if we go all the way around? You know, so we start off somewhere and we go all the way around. Yeah? That's, a, that's making theta two pi. So if we go all the way around, what happens then? Well, then the area will be, let's see, it's going to be 1 half times r squared times 2 pi. What happens then? Let's take a look here. The 2s will cancel out. And I have pi times r squared. Hey, I get the area is pi r squared. That's the area of a circle. So see how we can sort of recover some of these things that we've seen before? So the area of a circle and also the circumference of a circle. Those are things we, we kind of just recover by making the special case of the angles all the way around. What's useful here is this tells us 
what this area is, because we're kind of doing it as a fraction of this pi r squared. That's kind of what we're doing here. So let's take a look at a practical example. I like this in here, math just got important because we're doing, I was just thinking about sector areas that look like pieces of pizza. Um, so a circle has a radius 10. <clears throat> we have a sector and it sweeps out an angle of four radians and they didn't give us a diagram. I think what'll help is to start by doing that diagram. So let me just uh, draw a circle. La, 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 there we go, like this. Let's attempt to draw what is going on here. We have this radius of 10. That means from here to here, I know that that, whoops, maybe I'll make it a straight line going across maybe. This will be something like this right here, and this will be 10 centimeters. All right, now how far do I make this sector area? I mean, it's four radians. What's that? Well, keep in mind what I do know. I do know if I just want to do this drawing at least, I know that pi radians equals 180 degrees. That I know. And remember, pi is around 3-ish. I mean, it's 3.14. So if I've got four radians, can you see I'm going a little bit more than pi? So a little bit more than 180. So I don't know. I mean, I'm just trying to estimate, but it'll be something like at least more than 180. So more than straight across. So maybe like this. I don't know, something like that. Where this right here is going to be my angle here in... Radian. This right here is four radians. Okay, this is four radians. That means that my sector area then is going to be, you know, this piece right here, this whole shaded area. That'll be my area. Okay? That'll be my sector area. And my arc length will be this, you know, from here, going all the way across, like this right here, from here to here. This will be my L going across here. So let's do the length of the arc. The arc length is just this equation, L equals R theta. So in this case right here, then it's going to be nice and easy. It's going to be just, let's see here, L equals R, which is 10 centimeters, times theta, which is 4. So that just gives me 40. 40 what? Centimeters. Yay, that was it. That was actually pretty easy, wasn't it? So that was that one. That was the arc length. And the sector area, let's see if it's just as easy. Well, we use our equation for the area, A equals 1 one half. And then remember what, how it goes here. It goes r squared theta. So I'll write it down, r squared theta. So in my case then, uh, let me do it maybe in black here. So area equals one half times r, which is 10. So it's 10 squared times theta, which is four. Well, 10 squared is 100. 100 times four is 400. So it'll be 400 divided by two, which is going to be 200. Now let's think about what units we should use. Area has units of the distance squared, so it'll be centimeters squared. There we go. So as you can see, I hope you'll agree, it's actually not that bad. Once you start thinking about radians, and even the drawing wasn't even so important. You could have done it without it. I just thought it's kind of nice to show you the drawing in case you have some weird things going on. Now, when do we use this? We use this a ton, actually. Turns out resolution, for example, of your uh, phone or your monitor, something like that. We have this thing in physics called the Rayleigh criteria, and that is actually useful. So there we actually find, uh, same thing with satellite imaging, it's actually the same sort of situation. In my physics course, I was teaching my students this. I want to show you something here. So let's say I do this. Let's just pretend this here is like the Earth here. And I have some satellite that is you know, roaming on top of Earth here, and it's trying to take pictures of people. So it's like a spy satellite, and it's trying to image people on Earth. We have this thing called Rayleigh criteria, and it turns out you can find the minimum angle between here and here that it can image. So we actually find this minimum angle here. So we find this angle, and it turns out this angle we find is in radians. We have this distance, so maybe this is like, you know, 250 kilometers or something like that. And this angle right here might be like 10 to the minus 7 radians, so it's something very, very small. But it turns out we can then find this distance then. And it's a arc length, so we use just L equals R theta, which is really nice. So we use that for resolution, for satellite imaging, for distances on Earth, it turns out, this same idea we can use. So we actually use this a ton.